This is episode 2 of my sweet potato germination experiment and it's also day 20. So at this point you know I had some sand on top of the soil and the potatoes were only half covered but there was a lot of fungus gnats so I decided to filter out some of the larger particulates and put on a nice new layer of fine sand that was thicker. So here you can see me basically picking up the larger particulates, the old sand and the dirt. And the dirt, the potting mix is very, very moist just right underneath that sand. So that initial watering I did for this uh, plant spa pot um, has worked very well. And you really don't need the soil to be waterlogged because if you do, the potatoes themselves, uh, the tubers, will rot. So that would be really disgusting to have three giant, you know, complex carbohydrate sources just rotting away in the bowl. So, you know, you can see the russet potato and the gold potato are greener, but they haven't started to germinate really as the sweet potato has. It's day 20 of this sweet potato germination experiment. So the shoot is roughly the same as yesterday. Uh, this one too, not much progress there. But in the previous footage I demonstrated how I uh, solved this fungus net problem by burying everything in sand. So there were a lot of pebbles to filter out. Still a lot of fungus gnats hanging around the pot. This is one of them. And I'll try to get rid of them later, but Rest assured, I don't see any fungus gnats, you know, getting through that thick layer of sand. After I buried everything in the sand, a lot of these fungus gnats just took off. And, you know, they were buzzing around my face. Some of them went to the bathroom or the kitchen to try to get water. But the bottom line is, I've seen these things try to burrow through a layer of sand, and they don't seem to be able to do it. And I don't think emerging flies from the soil can burrow out of this thick layer of sand. It's day 23 of this sweet potato germination experiment. So that bud hasn't really made much progress, but this one has. And it's coming along quite nicely. It looks very alien, you know. Um, I have another video of something called Sacred Datura um, that I can refer you to, but yeah, uh, basically plants that have these purple leaves uh, they sort of look creepy to eat, so this is probably not the first choice of what I'd try to eat if I were starving in the wild, but basically we're seeing some green now, and that means there's photosynthesis going on. Um, there's still a lot of fungus gnats around, but uh, I'll get to that later. This is a very encouraging development. And it seems like with these tuber plants, uh, like in my ginger video series, the first shoot has a huge first mover advantage over all the other shoots and it'll develop way, way faster. So my other potatoes haven't even done anything. Um, they've turned more green and they look ready to start sprouting something, but they still haven't. So sometimes supermarket potatoes have... Uh, you know, growth inhibitors sprayed on them. So that could be what's going on. Uh, I didn't guess, you know, that it would take so long for these things to germinate. But it's already day 23 and all we're seeing is this, like, bizarre purplish, you know, anchor-shaped uh, sprout growing over there by the sweet potato. So here's another angle on the sprout. And basically these are leaves that are waiting to unfurl basically fold it in half and let's see so how many are there well, that's a lot actually you know it looks like it could be four um, larger more visible ones with a bunch of small ones in between so this is very interesting I've never quite seen something like this okay so we have a much better more zoomed in look now so there are green areas, the petioles of future leaves. Looks like there could be, I don't know, one, two, three, four at the top. Five, six, seven, eight. You know, that's my guess. There are eight leaves uh, developing. And it's kind of weird how this is developing 
And, you know, I'm sure you have noticed all these, like, shadows moving around. There's all these, like, fungus gnats. And I think I don't have a sand layer that's thick enough yet to get rid of all these uh, annoying beasts. So, basically, there's still a lot of wood chips. Those came with a potting mix. They're meant to degrade over time and fertilize the soil. So, I clearly haven't made this sand layer thick enough or this could just be the last bastion of hope for all these uh, indoor fungus gnat pests. So they fled my honeydew pot and I sanded that over really well and they fled my ginger pot I sanded that over really really well. Um, be sure to check out those series if you're interested in those species. The other thing that's interesting is there's a little shoot here so I don't think that's the same as this one over here and if we look closely you know that's another example um, you know this one probably doesn't get nearly as much water as everything that's uh, on the side underneath so that could just be another shoot that is happening to come up in the same location but could be from a different bud so we'll see what happens Okay, it's day 24 of this sweet potato growing experiment. So the sweet potato is actually very distantly related to the other two potatoes I have in this pot. You know, the russet potato and the gold potato. So this belongs to the family uh, Convolvulaceae. It has uh, 50 genuses or genera and about a thousand species among those genera. And these are basically dicots, they have two cotyledons. But I can't really tell where or what the cotyledons are. It seems like those little shoots at the bottom of this stalk are probably part of it, in fact. And what I'm beginning to think is that this came from, you know, the bottom side, so it's probably a lot deeper than what we see here. So I would hesitate to, uh, for instance, point out and say that this is a cotyledon, that's a cotyledon, because I don't think that might be the case. I think it might be buried down underneath. And what we see on top here is a bunch of true leaves and the shoot apical meristem is somewhere in there. So it's definitely not a fuzzy uh, stalks and leaves kind of plant like honeydew is. Everything seems very bare and straightforward. The colors are quite exotic because this is like a, a reddish purple and it seems like these leaves will start to slowly turn green after time. So I'm still seeing this problem of having a lot of fungus gnats running around. Here's an example of one just resting on the side of the pot and here's another one running around probably trying to look for a place to lay its eggs. So I don't think I have a very good seal here. If we go over here you know, maybe I've disturbed the pot too much, or I probably just didn't put enough sand. So what I'm going to do later today is basically filter out all these particles. And in fact, I think I'll put a little bit more dirt because I think I just have too much of the surface of these potatoes exposed. So if I were to uh, cover more of these with dirt, I don't feel like covering them completely, but... I think that might be in the best interest for germination. It's already been close to a month and we've only seen the sweet potato germinate. So I'd like to get everything going just a lot faster. Like this bud, for instance, hasn't really been moving at all. It's, well, it, it has, but it's just really, really slow. So at the start of this episode, I was sanding and now you can see I'm doing that again because the fungus gnat problem just got worse and worse and every day you know, uh, a bunch of those little buggers would just be flying all around in my apartment and bothering me. So here you can see me kind of cleaning away all the particulates, everything I laid down before. There was still a lot of, uh, you know, wood chips from the potting mix. So here I'm laying more potting mix with the aim to sort of bury most of these potatoes. The sweet potato is bigger and, you know, that's why it sticks out more. So, you know, this part was pretty easy just uh, laying more and more potting mix over it 
and patting it down and give it everything nice. Uh, I'm not really compacting it tight or anything. And then I took some of that old mix and refiltered it through this strainer and basically got a very nice even layer of sand. And then I just kept grabbing more and more sand out of that bag you see to the right and kept straining and you know twirling my fingers around in there gently to uh, get all the sand to filter out. It's a pretty arduous process and the only reason I have to do this is because the sand is so wet and it comes with all these pebbles in it which is kind of a cheap trick by the sand not manufacturers but providers you know and you know I'm not a large scale buyer but I would be pretty annoyed if you know I had a large lawn or needed a lot of sand for some kind of garden or project in a home and basically bought a bunch of wet bags of rocks you know so yeah, here you can just see me sanding more and more. And, you know, it's a really nice layer. And only the sweet potato has a sprout. And I had to kind of flick it to get sand off. But, you know, a lot of the sand stayed stuck to that um, sprout and its leaves. And unless I try to use a canister of uh, air to kind of blow them off, I don't really think I can get them off. Maybe I can just kind of spray some water on it to wash them off. But... You know, I'm just adding finishing touches here. It's day 27 of this sweet potato germination experiment. So just yesterday, uh, I'm not taking footage every day. Um, you know, I'm really crunched for time. But anyway, these leaves were all very purple, no doubt, because they are filled with uh, carotenoids, pigment, chemicals, and plants. Um, you know, they give them their purples, uh, sort of like beets, you know, or they give carrots their orange color, um, or Japanese maples, um, you know, sort of this color actually, you know, this kind of purplish, reddish color um, in some Japanese maples. You know, I've seen my dad grow sweet potatoes uh, using hydroponics, just having a piece of sweet potato soak in water for a couple of weeks, and I remember the foliage being green. So maybe this isn't so different after all. So these leaves uh, look very healthy. And you know, they kind of have that heart shape that the honeydew leaves have, although there are some differences. Um, I wouldn't call these edges serrated, but they definitely have a different kind of pattern to them. And this structure is just very robust, you know. It's probably has like two or you know, five, six, seven centimeters buried into the soil. And so this structure all in all might be, you know, I don't know, 12, 13 centimeters tall. And, you know, considering nothing else in this pot has germinated yet from the gold potato or the russet potato, that's pretty impressive. So here's the fungus gnat. And I just saw it walking around. You know, the grains of sand look like boulders next to it. But essentially, the fungus gnat activity has completely died out over the last two or three days since I re-sanded this. So they just can't get in, and if there are eggs in their hatching, they can't get out either. So that'll disrupt the whole life cycle and, you know, generation cycle of these pests. And basically, uh, I won't need to worry about anything like this anymore. I didn't really see any fungus gnats just buzzing around me in front of the bathroom mirror or at night, you know, when I'm holding up my cell phone in bed just to look at my cell phone or whatever browse the web. I don't see, you know, a pesky fungus gnat buzzing between me and the phone. So that's great. With so much of this structure buried under the sand, I really can't tell. Um, I think these are dicots. They should have two cotyledons. Um, not quite sure which ones those would be, uh, but these structures look like they're all part of the same, you know, general structure, and they should develop into leaves. Like if you look higher up, you'll see some other, you know, still purple leaf structures. So I think this might be the first true leaf, actually, and. 
Maybe this is a cotyledon. And this is a cotyledon. Now they have a slightly different morphology compared to the straight heart or spade shaped leaf here. So um, yeah, these leaves look very nice in their own right. You know, when they're all purple in the beginning, it kind of gives you the heebie jeebies, you know, kind of think they're poisonous or something. So anyway, I see this uh, springtail on the top. But the springtail's days are numbered. Um, I don't think they can get through the sand either. So eventually, you know, this is their last bastion or last refuge. And after this, they'll die. I hope. So anyway, these leaves have a very nice uh, kind of hybridized look to them. Maybe by tomorrow, within a few days, they'll be completely green. And you know, you can eat these uh, as greens, you know, as vegetables. And um, you know, I've seen my father cook these before. So you know, I think people in other parts of the world routinely will eat these leaves in addition to the tuber known as the sweet potato. So it's been 27 days. That's quite a long time. You know, I thought all these three potato species would, would have just taken off by now. And this one sort of is. But on the other hand, you, there's this bud that's just kind of sitting there. So this is, again, a little different from my ginger germination experiment. I thought ginger was kind of a slow poke, but... Um, you know, this seems to be even more of a slow poke. And the gold potato and russet potato are only remotely related to the sweet potato. And, you know, when the time comes and those germinate, I'll start a series on those. But for now, this is solely, this whole pot is devoted to this sweet potato germination experiment. So this bud has barely gotten any bigger. And I don't see any other buds anywhere on this, uh, not on the surface of these, but you know, this whole thing is almost completely buried in sand. So that's by design to keep the bugs out. But anyway, it's interesting to see what comes of this. But it seems like once something takes off, it really takes off. So by the time everything else comes out and the other potatoes start to germinate, I'm, this whole structure will be enormous by then and very tall.